Hey guys, welcome to my tutorial on how to style a wig for Akira Kurosu or Joker or the protagonist from Persona 5. Uh, it really doesn't look like it doesn't even need styling, but in my opinion the styling just looks a ton better. I really wanted to go for his disheveled look, but I still wanted it to look good and not like I just got stuck in a wind tunnel with a wig on. So first up was just seeing how the wig lay and trimming it to be more manageable. It is obviously important to have references on hand because it just makes it more accurate. So once I was done, I used a hairdryer to coax the hair into lining in the directions I needed it to, then went around and did a more fine cutting to get correct length and thicknesses for the small little spikes. I find it helpful to have multiple references and I have a thing for gifts because in it you can see how the hair falls. So what I do after all the brushing and just seeing where everything goes, then I go to the back and start styling that first because I feel like it helps, it helps you see where everything's sitting and also you can style the front according to it. So basically what that means is I try to avoid the bangs and try to get the, the hair that frames the face other than the bangs. So the hair leading into the, into the bangs and the sideburns. I find it quite important to have some sort of volume in the front, so having some hair that is a little bit shorter at the top can really give the illusion of some dimension in the wig. As always, using the hairdryer really helps the wig fibers just set properly because the heat really makes the fibers more manageable. So here you can see me starting to work on the sideburns, basically seeing where they lie, how long I want them to be, and then just going in and trimming. I use the uh, thinning scissors quite a lot because you don't want them to taper out too thickly, especially if you want a more natural kind of look. If you want them to go to a hectic point like some anime, then you can use different methods. So what I do with the thinning scissors is I try to cut at an angle so that it tapers out a little bit more towards the bottom so that it will give a more natural slope. A trick that I use is also just using some hairspray on my fingertips just to kind of put the spikes into sort of temporary places so that I can see where most of them are going to lie. This planning is quite important when you want to prepare your wig because you don't want to end up having too much on one side and then not enough on the other and then you're going to have to do a lot to change it. So here you can see me finishing up the first spike of some sort. It's this little piece that kind of sits up at the side of his head and it's a fairly large one compared to some other ones. But basically the recipe is just taper it out, hairspray it, put it into a curl or shape that you want, hairspray it again and then hair dry it and then it should try and keep some semblance of that shape otherwise you can just try again. I did try to have some more variety in the shapes that I had, so some were slightly longer curls, some were short tight ones, it depends on what kind of look I wanted to go, so for this disheveled one, having a lack of, I don't know, solidarity just makes it look a lot better. And also it helps to give the more disheveled look by having these random tufts of hair everywhere, but they're still kind of planned. Also, because this is more a natural look, I leave a lot of the hair unstyled, so just loose and in its natural state, so that there's only some tufts that are going in specific directions. This really helps it look more purposeful and natural, and that it's not just all in one big spike. So I didn't have any kind of written planning or anything for the spikes, but I kind of used just common sense and knowledge to just make the spikes more natural and like going in different directions. So I tried to have some of them overlapping each other and basically just eyeballing it all the way across just to see where I want them to lie and how I want them to lie. You can pretty much see how I'm busy doing the spikes, so letting them dry with the hairdryer. The hairdryer is a pretty crucial step because otherwise the 
the hairspray kind of just weighs down the actual hair. So the back and sides are pretty much done, um, with m just minor little touches done here and there. Uh, mini twirl, uh, you can see the wefts a little bit, which I wasn't too happy about, but because I was wearing a black uh, wig cap, it didn't really phase me that much. Um, and also, if you just kind of softly pat the hair, then it pretty much lies into place. So here I'm starting with the bangs. I normally try to work from top to bottom because it makes it easier to see where everything's lying and also the top really does make a difference on how the bottom looks. It was also quite easy to just see, oh look the top is standing up and then you can actually get to the bottom fringe easier. While I contemplate my English I am here finding another picture of the front of his head so that I can actually style the fringe. So here I clip away the hair that I'm not using and work on underlying layers first, building up mini spike by mini spike until I'm done. The bangs involve more planning because they're going to be the pieces most accurate to the picture. So I'll be paying more attention to the reference picture while cutting and styling. This is also where I pick up any inconsistencies in the rest of the style because I can see the overall look coming together. So after not a lot of effort, your wind tunnel mess of a wig should be looking more like a hot mess. Thanks for watching guys, feel free to leave a like, comment and subscribe. Also please do share any ideas or questions below or any tutorials that you'd like to see. Bye!